when scientist naturalist Charles Darwin sailed around the world on the HMS Beagle. This voyage provided him with key evidence to develop his theory of evolution by natural selection. And today we celebrate Charles Darwin's 200th birthday. For you teachers out there, I have some neat hands-on science investigations that you can implement within your classroom as you celebrate Charles Darwin's 200th birthday. From analyzing structure and function amongst the animal kingdom, to making DNA models and looking at mutations, comparing bird beaks, looking at how animals have changed over time, to analyzing fossils. Darwin spent a great deal of time studying the differences and the similarities amongst the animal kingdom. To reinforce this concept, you can use animal skulls in your classroom, real or models, integrate math by having your students use calipers, this happens to be a digital caliper, and rulers. They can measure the skulls and compare the similarities and the differences. To further study adaptive radiation, you can have your students compare the human arm to the bat wing to the elephant forelimb. The similarity of a bat's wing, an elephant's leg, and a human's arm may not be readily apparent without a closer look at the underlying body structures. Basic design of the mammalian forelimb demonstrates the evolutionary phenomenon of adaptive radiation. Through natural selection, the form of mammalian forelimbs has been modified during the last 65 million years into many shapes to perform a variety of functions. Darwin spent over 20 years gathering evidence to support his theory of evolution and one of the phenomena that he was greatly interested in is how species change over time and genetic mutation. What you can do to reinforce this concept in your classroom is have your students build simple DNA models. And what I've used here are two full-length pipe cleaners and those represent the sugar phosphate backbone and then I've got shorter pipe cleaners that are representing the base pairs. And once your students are done with their models, they simply twist the sugar phosphate backbone and voila, you have your DNA model. Now a further extension of this is to actually have your students demonstrate a mutation. And if you look here at our color coding, we have a mutation that has taken place right here. Initially we've had that combination. Here we have a change of the color code from here to here. So this would represent the mutation. What Darwin is probably most widely known for is his extensive study of the 13 to 14 different species of finches he observed and studied on Galapagos Island in the 1800s. And what he found were that the finches were very similar, but the major differences were in their beaks. Their beaks were very specialized according to their food source. So you can get a variety of bird models and have your students compare the bird beaks in the bird models. And as you can see here, the beaks are all very different. If possible, you may be able to get some actual bird skeletons in your classroom and compare bird beaks as well. Aside from bringing in different bird models and having your students analyze the bird beaks to determine their food source and habitat, you can have your students design bird beaks using simple tools such as forks, spoons, tweezers, a knife, chopsticks, pipette, clothespin. Is record how long it takes them to pick up the different food sources using the individual tools. Here I have a pipette that is used to draw up the nectar and what type of bird might do that and how much food can they get within a certain amount of time. Tweezer represents a bird beak. How many seeds can I pick up within an amount of time? How easy is it? How difficult is it? A fork. A clothespin, picking up the nut. The lima bean. Chopsticks can be used to represent a bird beak and I'm just going to try to pick up this peanut with the chopstick. How about the lima bean? That's a little more difficult. How about the small seed? That's nearly impossible. How about the marble? Whoop, not too easy. Oh, pretty good. Plastic is a form of a simple machine, a lever, and scientists often 
get their ideas for their inventions from nature. Nature got there first. So that's what you can do with your students. Have your students use simple tools from around the home and kitchen to act as bird beaks and then you can be studying bird beaks and adaptation. Darwin was very interested in how species change over time. To reinforce this concept in your classroom, you can get models of prehistoric creatures and compare them to their modern day relatives. Here I have the elephant, the dolphin, and the alligator and their common ancestor. Darwin was an accomplished geologist and he collected many fossils from various rock strata during his five-year voyage on the Beagle. To reinforce this concept in your classroom, you can obtain fossils from plant and animal species and have your students analyze and compare the different fossils. Have your students group the fossils according to similarities. We have a trilobite fossil here and the horseshoe crab is a distant relative of the trilobite. A fish fossil, a replica of a T-Rex, and dinosaur footprint. Happy 200th birthday, Charles.